thank you all for for joining us on this lunchtime virtual studio visit. Um, I'm so glad we can we can do this. Um, you know, I think initially with the start of the pandemic and sheltering in place, we really thought it would be sort of a short term thing, and it's um, it's really gotten quite um, mm. uh, extended. And uh, and I was really kind of feeling the itch, the need to. Um, connect with artists and and do studio visits and um, and surprisingly doing these virtual visits have been um, really fulfilling in some ways. It's not quite the same as being able to see works of art in person, of course, but mm -hmm. um, I'm grateful for the engagement. So um, thank you for for joining us and being a part of this talk. Um, and I also want to thank our Northwest Art Council for supporting programs like this and for our dedicated board who's been helping um, share the news and continue in efforts for our further engagement um, with the community. Um, and next up, we have our final studio visit for the fall season um, with the artist Megan Hanley, also based in Portland. And um, her studio visit will be on Thursday, November 19th um, at the same time at noon. Um, and so now I'll introduce Otis. Thank you, Otis, so much. Um, and I feel like Otis, we've been in touch for months trying to figure <laughs> out a studio visit and then yep. trying to work something out with the um, since the pandemic. Um, but I'm glad we're able to kind of connect this way. Yeah. Um, so I'll just read Otis's uh, biography. Um, born in Accra, is, did I pronounce that correctly? Accra, yeah, correct. Ghana? Accra, yep, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now he's in Portland. Um, captivating portraits, color and fashion become a language of transformation for Quaco's work. He presents his subjects as symbols of empowerment and redemption sophistication and humility, curiosity and quietude. With each figure, he celebrates the idea of origin and personal narrative in the context of gender and race dynamics. Terence Trullo recently wrote, in effect, Quaco's work is a practice of collage, talking or taking candid portraits of his subjects' faces and editorializing their outfits and environments creating a timeless vision of the black figure. His work exhibits all over the world, including China, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, South Africa, and throughout the US. And um, Otis has a busy schedule um, that's coming up. So um, there's a group exhibition in Shanghai at the Almond Wretch Gallery in November. Um, have yes. those uh, I'm assuming those works have been shipped already, so yeah, <laughs> we, won't, we won't see those in the studio. Um, also, uh, Otis will be a part of um, Robert's project's um, Art Basel in December, and that will in be December. virtual. Um, and then um, Otis has a one-month residency coming up at the Rubel Museum in January. Um, that will be followed up by an exhibition, um, and that will be your uh, first museum exhibition, is that correct? Yeah, correct. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> yes, great. Um, well, thank you so much, Otis, for joining us. And um, I guess I'll hand it over to you now. Well, thank you for having me. And um, hello to everybody. And uh, nice to talk to somebody, at least take a little bit of time off the studio work and then talk to you. And like you said, we've been trying to do this like who knows like forever, <laughs> but finally we, we we we've been able to do this. Um, you've you've already said a lot about my biography and all that. So I was born and raised in um, Accra, Ghana, where um, I took um, my art uh, college. First, art art first of all started for me out of curiosity, you know seeing people draw and all that. It was just uh, something that mesmerized me. And I, I have always wanted to know how come they are able to project this on a piece of paper or whatever surface they're doing. So out of curiosity, I started, you know, 
also drawing and it was two movie posters. So I started with that and trying to recreate any image that I would see. So from, from time to time, it just grew and became something like a hobby. So as I continue to do it, you know, I started to love it more and more and more. So then later on, I, I'm, I'm like, why don't I find out if there is a school for art? And I didn't know there was even a school for art and all that. So I had to find out all of that. And then later on, I was um, introduced to a school called um, Ganata College of Art and Design after my senior high school. You know, so I went straight to the college and then uh, took my art lessons. That was for four years. So four years, it's just being practical and learning the basic of art and drawing and all that. And then um, after four years of graduating in the College of Art, I came out and then have to find out or have to keep practicing and find who I am as an artist, my own language, my style and all that. So during those period, I went through various procedures. I went through various process. I was mostly painting abstract landscapes and all that because it, I, I loved playing with colors. I loved mixing different colors and coming up with things. I just love creating stuff. Until until one day I I I found an interest in photography, which I, I wanted to also learn more. So I took a lesson from a friend who was a professional photographer. We go around a lot taking photos and all that until he took a shot of a woman. I was in a black and white photography that I saw, and that just intrigued me because the, the, it was just um, a profile picture, just a, a portrait picture, but the stare and glare in the woman's eye just caught my attention and made me wonder who that woman is and all that. So that sort of connection just hit something in my head. I'm like, you know what, why don't I go into fig figurative painting or portrait painting so that I will sort of like explore this connection and feeling between me and then the people. So I started taking, also started practicing on um, portraiture and figurative. Like I said, took me back to my childhood when I started drawing. So I started again recreating images, but I used my friend's pictures that he took, started recreating them to see if I would be able to get that same connection as I saw in the photography. So I did that and then the love just grew and grew and grew and grew for figurative. Then what was my next step? My next step was how, what issue can I talk about using the figure, using people? What kind of issue can I also join in and talk about? So it, it, was, it was a sort of like exploration, trying to find out how I can connect to the society, how I can talk about issue using figurative painting, using portraiture. So that is how I, I, I got to get involved when it comes to figurative painting. So I did a couple of um, exhibitions here and there when I was in Ghana, but it was mostly group shows. Group shows until I, I, I came to the US in somewhere in 2017 and I got married. And um, I, I, I just left everything behind in a crowd because when you, I'm in a different country, in a different state, everything has to start afresh. So it was a thing, again, what or how can I participate in the, in the arts industry with what I do? So I had to also go through various, you know, topics, various issues, find out what is going on around me in Portland, Oregon. Anyway, I live in Gresham currently. So yeah, I have to find out what kind of a uh, topic or issue that is going on so that I can get myself involved with as an artist. So it, it, was a, it was difficult for me from the beginning because you don't have friends here. You are now coming to find out what art uh, group that you can join and all that. And it's, it's kind of difficult when people don't really know you because then it becomes difficult for them to also connect with you and then, you know, that sort of thing. So I, w I went through online and then started researching on art groups or galleries that I can, you know, go there and see all that. And then I find out about the Gresham Art Committee, um, which I, I, I send them an email and say, I would like to join 
as a member so that I will also kind of like involve and also kind of bring what I do from Accra, Ghana to there. So they accepted me and then and I joined them. So it was my first kind of group people of artists and that I joined. And then we, we had this group uh, exhibitions every month that we do. So that was how I was able to, you know, also put myself out there for people to see what I do. But again, it was it was a struggle for me because I was still looking at what kind of issue. Because I love to use my art to also participate in a, in, a, in something that is going on. Because I'm part of this modern world, and as an artist, I feel it's my duty to be also to contribute in some way to talk about my era and all that. So I was painting in a different way and using different method and also talking about various issues and all that so it, it it was it was an experience for me because it, i meet new people i meet new artists so that is where i got to know what is going on and all that and um, um during all this time i had a friend which i met during college and he was also in vienna he's my one of my best friend right now and we 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 we've, we since he left from um, Accra to Vienna. We lost contact and it's been a while since that. So we reconnected somewhere in 2018 where he has to come to LA to for his first exhibition with uh, Robert's project. So he invited me to come to the show. So I went there and it was all nice. That was my first time like in LA and also, you know, being in the midst of different people, different artists, different group of, so it was, it was also a total different from LA and then uh, in Poland. So after that, I just came back to Poland again after his show and all that, life continues with the uh, Gresham Art Committee. We've still been going on with um, organizing exhibition and taking part and all that. And then um, he called me again and then said um, he will be coming back to LA for his residency. So whenever I'm free, I should join him. At that time, I had uh, applied for a job at uh, FedEx because you also have to pay bills and all that. So I have to <laughs> do all that. And then um, when he finally got to LA, and then he said he's finally in LA now. So whenever I'm free, I should, I should step in. And then we just hang out as friends, as old times say. So yeah, I went to LA and then quit my job <laughs> just to go to LA. So I went to LA and then was hanging out with him and um, you know, looking at him paint and all that. And then he was nominated for some award in Vienna. So he had to leave and then I had to stay behind. So staying behind, what am I gonna do? I said, why not get myself some materials and then paint whilst I wait for him to come back. So I was just painting and all that. And then um, the, gallery that he exhibited, which is Robert's project. Um, the, it's, he's called Bennett. He came in and then he's, he was looking at me and he said, am I an artist? And I said, yeah. And he said, why didn't I tell him the first time we met? I said, you know, it's, it's, it's my friend's exhibition. I didn't want to, you know, come between and say, hey, you know. So he, he, he was very surprised a little bit and he was looking at me painted and all that. And, he told me he's interested in the painting that I'm working on. So if yeah, nobody has buy it, he wants to buy it. I said, why not? <laughs> so he bought that piece from me. And then uh, later on, uh, Marianne Ibrahim came in from the Marianne Ibrahim Gallery in Chicago right now. She also came in and then also saw me working on a couple of pieces. And then she also bought that piece. And then um, she asked me a bunch of questions and all that, you know, just wanted to know who I am, where I'm from, my, uh, my practice and all that, and all that. So it, 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 it was all an interesting and an experience for me because that is where I started connecting with Robert's project, who was now interested in um, working with me and all that. So later on, he came back and then talked to me and all that, and then he said he would love to work with me. And he would start off with me with, um, Basel in Miami, which was a huge, big deal for me because I didn't know about Basel until he spoke about it. And I went home, did my research. I'm like, oh God, this is big. So it, it, it motivated me to do more, to work harder. And so that is where I thought, okay, I must really be 
doing something, you know, something that is cutting across. So I did the work and then they took it to Basel and the response was just amazing. It was amazing. So they came back and then gave me a residency at LA. So I had to come back to Portland, work and prepare myself and then go back to LA for my residency. So during my residency that I did, I started working on the, um, the pieces. Also, my style started changing a lot because by then I have found my language. I have found what I, I am comfortable and confident in uh, talking about. So it, it, everything and the style just changed completely. And the feedback that came was just awesome. So the work that I did in LA was used for my first big solo exhibition and uh, which was um, um, the LEDC in, the, in January, which for, for got sold out, which was surprising to me in the first place. And the turnout was just amazing because I wasn't expecting that at all, but it was, it was such an uh, amazing experience for me and all that. And ever since then, it's just been going higher, 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 which I'm very, very, very thankful of. And then, yeah, here I am now, still in Portland, Oregon, where <laughs> I just love working here because it's so peaceful here. Unlike LA and New York, which is kind of like super busy and all that, here it just gives me the peace and then the sound mind to work. So I got, when I came back and everything started going well, I was painting in my garage anyways. I first started off in my kitchen and then moved to the garage. So, <laughs> so I, I, I finally was able to, to acquire a space uh, closer to downtown here. You know, and then um, started working on a larger scale more and more and more because things was getting really, really busy, which I will, I will take you through if you are ready for that. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I just want to share too with the audience, um, we'll, we'll do sort of a Q&A um, afterwards. So um, if you want to add your questions into the chat, um, please do. Um, and and um, we can do a Q&A at the end. Okay. So I'll, I'll first start off by explaining what I do and my type of work and style. So, my my work is there is mostly um, portraiture and figure. I don't like to consider myself as a figurative painting or portrait because for me, I say I'm an artist. I paint whatever that inspires me. I paint whatever that I feel like I should talk about. But at the moment, figure is what I do mostly. And I feel um, 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 it's the best way of communicating with people when you're actually using real people that you've actually come in contact with and able to tell their story and all that. My, my figures are mostly um, um, talking about the stereotype, talking about the black community, talking about the people of color. I usually don't like to use black people because I, I, I don't like using the word as if it's a, it's a crayon or something, you know, just using the word black. It's, it's it, it, for me, it's kind of like, how do I put it? Also contributing to uh, um, um, racism, as we put it, because we are all people, you know? So it, when you are talking about such things, you just have to be careful how you go about it. Um, my figures are mostly, Figures that empower, figures that uh, motivate, figures that shows, talks about the stereotype, how we are being represented on the media, how we are being represented everywhere we go. So my is to just do the opposite way, is to talk about how strong the black man is, how strong the black woman is, how strong we are, how proud we are when it comes to the um, uh, being who we are as people. So that is what you see mostly with my figures. And um, I'll start with um, how from the beginning when I started painting when I grew up. So a flip. So when I got here, these are some of the works that I, I, I did from the beginning from 2017 when I got here. I was talking about freckles. 
and how people will deal with it because there are a lot of people that don't have that face because they have to hide all the time and all. So I thought it was um, 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 my way of also contributing and talking about this thing because I had a lot of talk with some people that I come across when I go to Fred Myers and all that and talk about them. You can tell some of them don't really feel confident about it. Some of them really don't like it and all that. People even have been sometimes get bullied because they have freckles and then they think they're ugly and all that. So I thought it was it was an interesting thing for me to talk about. So I sort of added this butterfly I, as something that represents the type of person, the character and all that. So it's a way of me also adding to their character when I'm painting to work. Okay. So all this was done in um, 2017 when I first came here and it was um, acrylic painting. And I had this sort of draping style thing going on and all that. And then I started also talking about the body and how people feel when it comes to their body type and all that. And so this, in terms of nudity especially. And then I just transition when I started getting more involved with um, how the um, stereotype have been treated, how the black people have been treated in the community. So I started delving into that, I started, you know, talking to people and finding out who they are and finding out what's going on in their life, sort of try to see how I connect with this. Because when I also got here, I also had my experience of, you know, being bullied as a black person and all that. So I felt it was my responsibility also to talk about it since it's also happening to me. So I started with all this and you can see I was painting in full colors as well mm -hmm. like before it transitioning into all this. So this is my studio space basically it's about 900 square feet and all that. So I'll take you through here. It starts from uh, from here and then goes all the way from there. So these works you see are the works that I worked on when I first came here. These are all in acrylic stuff and I worked in here. Um, this is um, one of the um, painting commission that I did for uh, uh, Chris, fashion designer. And then they wanted me to do a portrait for the issue, I think was vanity or something like, was awesome. And then here we are. This is um, a portrait of, um, he's also doing well, he's called Kwesi. He is an interesting character and um, I just love the type of person he is and all that. So he came to visit me in Portland from Accra, Ghana. So I took a photo of him and he was wearing this suit and I, I told him, <laughs> Was he able to walk through the airport with this? Does he know what kind of like stripes and all that? Because it's like way back the prisoners and all that when they used to wear this. So it was interesting to me when I saw him wear that suit and all that. So I took a photo of him in the garage and then did this. So I oh, have these uh, okay. textures that I do at the background, which is sort of an idea that came back in Ghana in the, one of our suburbs called the Northern region where the buildings are like a mud house. So they use their hand with a mud and all that in the building just to create some sort of a texture. So I took that idea, which I really love because I love how it feels. And then the idea of seeing the strokes and movement of the brush also as well. You are coming to say something? Yes, can you um, talk about how now the um, transition that happens in the skin tone be, um, from the, the earlier works where you were kind of using kind of full colors and kind of full shades. Um, can you talk about that transition? Yeah, the transition came about, I, I was doing that way back in Ghana, but in Ghana it was, it was it, 
it didn't make sense talking about the dark skin color when we live in a country where everybody's black. But here it made more sense to me because we have different people living here. We have different people living here and this, and this sort of idea that we had back in Ghana was that, you know, we watch the news and all that and we see what is going on, but we, I didn't really get a sense of it until I got here. When I also, like I said, also had my share of being bullied and all that, because even where I live, people drive by and when I'm walking my dog, they stop and then make faces, monkey faces at me and then shout out racism words. So it sort of makes sense to me just to do, to, to talk about that and also try to use that in my painting as well, because only the black people go through this every day, every day. So what would be the best thing to represent that and also paint them in the color of my skin as well. So I thought it will cut, the message will cut across more when I use this type of tone of skin to do it than using the multiple color. And also I feel that when you use a multiple color, it also doesn't give the viewer the attention that's needed to focus on them, the figure and all that. So I thought it's, it, it will make more sense that the message will cut across more if I did it in that way. Yeah. Then back to that. I have this as well. I, I took this photo when I was in Ghana during our election year where people were protesting and all that. And I saw these two police officers just gazing at some protesters, you know, going about and the expression of their faces just caught my attention. So. I thought it was a good thing to paint. And I only paint, I took this photo a long time ago, I think about five years ago or something, but it just came across recently when the protests and then the police brutality were going on. So it sort of inspired me to, to paint this and all that. And then I have this as well. These are also two friends of mine. He is a stylist back in Ghana and um, I, I also, capture this moment from them and I thought it would be a great thing to represent them as well and the type of person he is. You can see him in his shoes and all that. It's just all based on able to capture the person's character and then the sort of living they, they, they normally do. Then this is a self-portrait of me as well. And then when I went to Chicago um, during last month, I was able to connect with uh, one friend of mine as well, who also just came to visit. And then he was sitting in a patio upstairs and he was kind of like out of it. So it, it was an interesting moment for me. So I just caught that moment on phone. And then I came to the studio and like, I would love to capture this. So that's him. His name is Kofi. And then we come here. I call this Beverly Hills. <laughs> This is also a friend of mine uh, who lives, uh, she lives in uh, London. Um, she is also a stylist and all that based um, in London. And I thought it was interesting with the uh, Beverly Hills within her, but she lives in London and all that. So I thought it was an interesting moment to capture as well. And then um, this one as well. This is also uh, someone that I know. She, she, I, she took this photo when um, she visited Senegal. That's, uh, she lives in Texas, but she is originally from uh, Senegal and she has never been to Senegal before. So she took this photo the first time she went to Senegal and um, it was a memorable moment for her. So I thought it would be a great thing to capture. And also uh, I love the fact that it's also showcasing her strength as a woman and how powerful and rich and royal that is. So I thought it would be um, a great thing to capture because I love everything about the fiddle with a gold scarf and it just looks so powerful and so royal. So I thought what a great moment to capture this. I love that the surrounding is also this kind of very lush environment. Like yeah. you know, everything just the so rich color there. About it. Yep. <laughs> and then, um, this is uh, Frederick and Nana. Frederick and Nana are friends of mine. I, I 
I captured this when um, they, during the pandemic, the first week of the pandemic, when everything just shut down. So I was, I was mostly interested in the life that was going on aside the protesting and all that. What was really going on in the house of people? Like, what are people doing during the pandemic? You know, the life that goes on in the house, the things that we don't get to see, the things that we don't get to hear behind all the craziness that is going on. So I, I captured this moment when they came to the studio and just hanging out and they were talking about how life is sort of boring now. And all that. So it, it's, it's this sort of a nice moment that I, I capture as well. And then um, this as well, this is what I call Yoyu, behind the view, window view of Yoyu. Um, I like this painting because it's sort of, it's, it's a male figure in the painting, all right, but the flower and the colors, everything also softens the masculinity of the guy and sort of give you that sort of like soft, but at the same time masculine sort of view. So I just, I just love everything about this and all that. This is also none of the same guy in the um, other painting. So that is him here on his phone as well. And then I sort of have this. So one of the things that I love about this is also at the same time depicting the pop culture when it comes to the, the, the how the black people dress, how we dress, how we want to represent ourselves, how we, we sort of want people to view us as a people and all that. So it, 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 the fashion sense in this was my main point in showing people and all that. And then this is one of my cowboys. I said, this is also a friend that I know of. Yeah, that. So the cowboy is also something that came as a fantasy when I was watching I used to watch the Western movies back in Ghana and all that because we 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 have never heard of a black cowboy and all that. So it is what it was a way of me, you know, fantasizing about if there is a black cowboy, how they will look. So I sort of created my own kind of black cowboys until I recently started finding out about that there is real black cowboys and all, which was you know so amazing to me. So it, it's it's also give me the edge to do more and also to research more and think more about that so sort of educating people as well that yeah black hair boys do exist black hair boys do exist like you said me the ones in portland as well which was amazing yeah, so it's, it's society yeah. yeah so it's always good to talk about them as well yeah. and all that so then it's a female as well so this is my working space area Mm. And I love the view of the train track and all that that goes by. Also. And then um, this is where I usually take photos of my muse. They mm. come here and then I take photos of them, just pose them with the light and everything. And then if I want them to dress in a certain way, I have props as well. And these are kind of like old colonial masters clothes and cowboy clothes and all that so cowboy boots <laughs> and all that so i kind of like i sometimes just dress them up when i have a certain idea in my head but i always make sure that i i i take um um photos of them first before i dress them up as well because sometimes i just like to to pin them the way they came in and mostly um it's all about showing the person's character and also talking about the person at the same time, adding my side of the story to it. So it's basically joining the two cultures together. My culture from Africa, Ghana, West Africa, and the culture of the African-American living here. So trying to blend those two together because when, when I am here and you see me for the first time, you wouldn't know whether I'm from Ghana or not, you straightforward thinking I'm African American, which is very interesting. So for me, it's, it's it's all about putting those two together, trying to blend those two together, and creating that sort of a powerful image and 
of, 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 of the African-American, of the Black African-American, of the African uh, living in uh, Ghana at the same time living in the US. So it's just basically an image of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is how I'll put it. <laughs> So that is my studio, that is my space. This is what I've been working on. And um, I would have loved to show you more of what I'm working on, but it's, it's for a couple of shows and it's not been released yet. So hopefully next time you will see it. <laughs> yeah, next time, hopefully I can bring a group and we can actually do a physical visit. Yep. That would be yep. awesome. Yeah. yeah, Otis. Well, thank you so much for walking us through. And I, um, and it's so great. I mean, the the trajectory of your career in some ways is is um, is very recent. I mean, just the rise of um, kind of getting it acknowledged, and also for you to find kind of your voice and why mm -hmm. why to why am I doing this figurative work. Um, what's the purpose of it? And it seemed like all of that really gelled together in this very kind of timely way. Um, yeah. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit, because when when we talked last time, I thought the process of your painting was really interesting. And that idea that, um, that it does feel almost like a collage. Um, in some ways, the figure, um, it's not that they're flat, but they're, they do seem more two-dimensional, but then the impasto background, the wall, the textured wall is, is kind of very thick and seems to come forward. Um, and um, yeah, can you talk about what kind of gets laid on first and what that process is? Oh, okay. First of all, I saw someone ask what's Robert's project, so if I can get that. Robert's okay. project is my, is my gallery in LA, gallery that represents me in LA. So it's a gallery in LA that represents me. That's, and yeah, the name of the gallery is called Robert's Projects. Yeah. So, and then um, back to your question. Um, I, I just sort of like the idea of the depth, you know, sort of like playing with dimensions. So I like the feel of touching the painting and having the feel of the paint and then the movement of the brush. I personally love paintings that have you know textures and depth and sort of like you can kind of, almost kind of like feeling the painting in your hands. So it, it it when it comes to the layers, I always go straight with the thick colors. I don't sort of apply first flat before I keep adding and adding. I always go straight with thick paint and all that because um, it also covers the area well, but at the same time give that kind of, for instance, let's just say wall. I love when you, you, you sort of, it also plays tricks on the mind, sort of like have a real feel of how the wall texture is. So I just, I just kind of like the stroke of it. And also the feel of having some sort of three dimensional uh, uh, um, feel of it. Yeah. And you, um, you do the figures first, right? That's kind of, you spend most of your time yeah. doing the figures. Yeah. I spend most of the time on the figure of God. The figure is my vocal point. The figure is what I'm talking about. The person in the painting is what I'm talking about. So it's very, very important. I bring as much as detail as I can to, uh, to the figure before everything comes on, before the clothing, before the background. The figure is my main point. So I spend most of the time on the figure and then the rest just comes in. So it, with the background, it always comes later part of my painting. Sometimes I don't even plan for the background. I kind of have a vision of it, but I've not planned for the background. So each time I do the figure, then it speaks for itself. Like this is what it needs at the background to make it complete and all that, which is weird sometimes, but it always plays out well. Yeah. I, I never, I always tell people, I never plan my backgrounds. They mm -hmm. always come to me when I'm done with a figure. So I always finish painting the whole figure with the clothes and everything on, then it sort of start coming up. Mm -hmm. We have another question here. Um, it seems most of your paintings are either of people you know or from photos you have personally taken. Is it important to you to have that personal connection before choosing a subject? It's always an instinct thing to me when I meet people. I don't always have to know the person. 
But sometimes when I go through town, I sit in a restaurant way before the pandemic and all that. People walk in and out. But sometimes there are seven persons that just walk in and then they just strike you differently. There is something weird about them. You get some sort of vibe that you think this person would be, let's just say it's, it's, like, it's like choosing a leader to represent everybody. <laughs> you don't just choose anybody and say, we want you to lead us. You see certain potential, you see certain kind of like high spirit in the person that you know that this person will be good to represent this group of people. Mm -hmm. So you just instantly choose that person. That's how it is for me. It's an instinct that I think this will be a good news to represent this group of people. That is how it always works out for me. And then when I choose them, sometimes I add my sort of feature to where that thing it will be good to add a little bit of beer to this, just to sort of create my ideal person that represents this kind of group of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I do love um, the, just the postures of um, the figures in all of your paintings, even the figures that seem reclined and even bored, or um, there is, I feel like there's just so much to read into each of the postures. Um, but I wonder too, and you were talking a little bit about merging kind of the Ghana perspective with the, um, the ex uh, folks from Portland and um, how much of that do you feel is sort of a, a collaboration? Do you have your subjects kind of um, also kind of guide in terms of what, how they want to portray themselves? And is there a bit of negotiation or um, collaboration? <laughs> Well, well, I, you, you sort of get the first thing when you start talking with them. I first have a conversation with them even before bringing up the idea that I want to take a photo of you and then paint. Because you don't just jump straight and say, hey, I would like to take a photo of you. The first reaction would be like, what? Why would you want to do this? That is what they will ask you. So you sort of have a friendly conversation with the person, just sort of have an idea who the person is. And then the way they respond, the way they talk to you, you sort of know what kind of person he is and how the person, because it all depends on how you talk to the person and then they let out everything. So once they let out everything, you know the type of person and then I approach them like, I'm an artist, I do this and I do that. And I think you would be best to represent it. And then I just talk to them. So when they come, some people do accept and say, yeah, but some also sometimes are a little bit skeptical because they still don't have that confidence yet. And it's all because of what is going on as well, because we've been shut down so bad that they don't even have the confidence to even voice out or to, to just show up. So it's, it's, it's one of the things that I do. So when I am painting those kind of people, I try to make them as powerful as they come so that when they come and then they see the painting themselves, it's sort of like, you know, puts their confidence like, you know what? I'm strong, you know what, I'm powerful, you know what? So it also, when they see the paint, it also sort of like empowers them and all that. So it's important to represent the person in a strong way that when the person sees it himself, deep within him or her, he know that, hey, I'm powerful as I can be. It's not just that, you know, just being all in hide and all that, no. So it's, 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 it's important for me when I, I, I do that as well. And then when they come in, I that is where, when it comes to the fashion scenes and the background, that's where I also blend in with my culture and way of dressing and all that. Yeah. It's beautiful. I like that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, another question here. How has the pandemic changed your ability to have people come to your studio to sit for photographs? Oh, yeah. It has changed that a lot because I've, I've still been trying to get people in the studio once there, but you know, they still have to be cautious about once we all have the marks and all that, you know. And then sometimes I just talk to them on phone and direct them, like, you can take it this way or that way. All I just want is you being you. And once I get that, that is all that I need. And then I can work my way throughout with the rest of it. I just want the person that you are. That is what I want to show to the other people. This is who you are. This is how you come as. The rest is just adding on when it comes to the culture, when it comes to our way of dressing, when it comes to how we live and all that. 
Yeah. That's so great. Otis, um, so I, I love to the um, earlier on in your career to, um, to not know that even an art school was even a thing and then to have been introduced in, into it. And um, who were some of the artists that you were looking at? And, um, you know, do you feel like you're in conversation with other painters? Do you, um, you know, are there artists that you are kind of mindful of in your work? Um, can you talk about some of that? Yeah, funny enough, I, I never knew about any artists when I first started drawing. For me, I thought it was something that almost everybody knows how to do. It's a hobby thing, because I wanted to be a soccer player growing up. Soccer was my thing. I wanted to be a professional soccer player and all that. So when I first got involved with drawing, it, the idea of me growing up to be a painter was never in the head of <laughs> So it was just something that I just loved to do. Until just, it just, grew, 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 the love grew, grew. And then when I first joined art school, that was when I started to know more about art, know more about people. So all my people that I wanted to grow up and become like the best artists in the world, were all Ghanaian artists. The professor, we had one called Professor Bloody Glover. He is also one of our best artists from Ghana. We school over and So I wanted to be like them because they were the, like the top notch when it comes to painting in Ghana. So coming to the US just opened a whole new door for me. Then you have a whole idea of what is really going on that there is more to just what I know from Ghana. So that is where I started to know about Kehinde Wale mm. and uh, Kerry James Marshall and all of that. Mm -hmm. Also, I, uh, my first encounter with their painting was coming to the Portland Art Museum. Mm. Uh, that was where I saw Kehinde Wale's painting for the first time. So it just blew my mind. And That's the amazing. way, yeah, so the way the person is just standing, the portrait, with majestic and all bold and like, it's so big that it's just in your face like that. And you are, you, you just want to know who that person in that portrait is. It's some sort of a royal prince or not, but it's just ordinary people that he met. Mm -hmm. and then just transform them and make them so powerful. And you can do that if you want to be. So it's, it's, it's just amazing how you can make one feel so powerful and so strong mm -hmm. with just by doing that. So it, it, he was one of the people that I'm like inspired me to do what I do and all that and, and a lot more. So, but now you have a, a whole lot of artists that are, you know, joining in in this conversation, which is very amazing and all that. So, yeah. A lot of the artists that I feel like we are all like talking about this, which is very, very amazing. And once we are all talking about this, you should know that there is a problem. <laughs> yep, there is a problem. And we are all trying to address this issue. And one of the way of addressing issues is actually talking about it. And this is our way of contributing to it. You know, it's basically, that's why I love using real people because they are out there these are the ones that are the things that are happening to them so if you don't use them to talk about this issue then when you do some sort of imaginative something it, it's for me it just doesn't connect well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because once you ask me who the pe person in the painting is and i tell you then you have certain kind of connection to it mm -hmm. absolutely well that makes me think about um, do you how do you title your paintings do you give a little bit of a hint of kind of who the subjects are or is it a little bit more mysterious <laughs> I I I make it more curiosity when it comes to the title I just I just I mostly like to use their names it's just a common oh, name but yeah. maybe I say oh this is Tracy, or this is Grace, or I would say, I'll do a whole big paint and I title it Grace. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, who is Grace? You know, <laughs> it sort of just gives you the curiosity yeah. when you say Grace. So who is Grace? Who is that person? And the names just sound so like normal Grace, but the painting looks so magic and so bold. So who is that Grace? Mm -hmm. So it gives you that sort of curiosity out of it. Sometimes I also just go straight forward to what I was trying to do. But I always like to use the names because these are the people. Right. And when you say, who is that? Then 
you get the explanation of that and who the idea the person of is. I thought, oh. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, just simply the name. We yeah. have another question. Will any of your 2020 work reflect the new normal of face masks? <laughs> I I mostly use the cowboy to do that. That is yeah. why mostly yeah. that's why mostly they have the bandana on. But it also signifies two different things. One is how we are being forced to keep quiet when it comes to the African-American, when it comes to the black people, we are not allowed to speak out what we feel. Mm -hmm. Before we try to speak out, we've been shut down already. It's just like how the police brutality and all that thing. Before you even start to talk or make a movement, they're already taking action on you already. So it's like we always, we are forced to keep quiet and just walk. So it, it, I always try to, you know, play around sort of thing. Like I said, I'm a very curious person and I like to make things a little bit mysterious and curious, like figure out what's really going on. So yeah, one of it is just the pandemic on reminding people to wear your mask and you know, also all that. Right. And then the other is how we are being forced to keep quiet and all that. So the image is powerful, but yet you're always forced to be quiet and always be at the background instead of being in the front line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, I mean, it's not great, but um, <laughs> the power of the message. <laughs> well, okay, so thank you so much. This has been such a treat. Um, I I love that you walked us through. Um, you know, basically, since you've moved to Portland, we're so lucky to have you here. I hope. I hope you remain. It is a, a really great place to work. Um, and I'm glad that LA and New York is too crazy for you and that Portland yeah. space. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I, lo I love Portland. Portland just gave me a quiet thing to work. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be here. Awesome. For now, I have nowhere to go. So <laughs> 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 yeah. So yeah. thank you to everyone that um, joined in and, and I hope I was able to talk about the things you wanted to hear. I was uh, hope also hope I was able to answer your questions and all that. If not, definitely when things get better, some of you can have the chance to come in and then see the work in person and all that. Of course, I know how it is when you see work on phone or pictures, it's different when you see it in person. So. Hopefully we get to show one day show in Poland, which I haven't been show in Poland. So I hope one day I get to show in Poland so that everybody can see as well. So thank yeah. you everybody. <laughs> Change that. Well, thank you so much. Um, we've got some positive comments here too, Otis, that I hope you can um, see as well. Are you able to see the comments? Yeah, um, I can see some of you. Yeah. I'm also applauding too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, Otis, so much. And you, um, we'll see you soon. Take care. All right. See you soon. Yeah. Take Love care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.